All right, hey, as we look at this uh, lovely spaghetti dinner benefit to uh, help some families, I actually don't even know what these families were, were uh, needing help with. Um, but I'm gonna try something and this might, this might absolutely fail. Uh, this might not be a video that I even put out, but if it is, hey, thanks for checking it out. I have a bit of an obsession with posters and flyers, and I have been collecting flyers around the state of New York for about 10 years, if not much longer. I, <laughs> sometimes I, I get the decades mixed up, uh, but I, I, I've been collecting flyers for a long time, and so I thought, hey, why don't I uh, look at some flyers make a little video about it and show people uh, some of my collection here. So I, I, when I get a, a flyer on this regular, you know, eight and a half by 11 size sheet of paper, I put it in my binder, I put in a little sleeve protector and I, uh, I have a, a bookshelf with a bunch of these on them. And let's just take a look. So over here, we got a nice Rota Gallery show. I believe this is uh, art by, I think this is Chris Rigsby. This is of uh, Adrian Aardvark fame. Here we've got a Harbor View uh, garage sale. This is not too exciting. Uh, and the reason I'm doing this is because someone asked me, hey Matt, do you have this certain flyer that I worked on a real long time ago? And I'm not sure if I do or not, but I'm gonna, I said, hey, I'm gonna look through this book anyway to help this person out, see if I can uncover a memory. Let's, let's look at it together. So uh, this, this flyer here, I don't know who made this. This looks like someone who... This almost looks like... This almost looks like a... A Jason Ormsby inspired flyer. Uh, and these are... Most of these that you're gonna see in this first binder here are uh, from Plattsburgh, New York, from the Rota Gallery days. Rest in peace. Something that was a, a real desperate attempt at getting people to show up was writing TODAY on the poster. Sometimes it worked. Uh, Phoenix Rising, Three Days of Music at Rota Gallery. This is another sort of desperate thing was, what if we did, uh, like, you know, multiple shows in a row over, over the course of several days? Uh, each show would have, uh, diminishing returns. Or, uh, you'd find one show that really did great and the others, uh, not as much. But, you know, when you're trying to pay their bills, you gotta try every damn idea you can. Some work, some don't. Uh, Implosion of the Ocean at Monopole. That's Implode the Abyss and Motion of the Ocean. Uh, with an opening set by Dust the Damager? I... Dust the Damager? I do a lot of work with Dust. I do not remember. I have a feeling Dust didn't actually perform on this show. I could be wrong. He could, he could call me on my bullshit. I got a feeling that Dust didn't perform on this. Uh, here we have Tyler Daniel Bean for the kid in the back and Stan Olivia. Uh, not an incredible poster, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> uh, dark text on a dark background. Um, although both these, both these posters are a little hard to read. Uh, but that, that's the thing that'll happen when you're making posters on your computer, and everything's illuminated. It's a little easier to see on the illuminated screen than it is, uh, <laughs> printed. But what are you gonna do, alright? Here's a poster that's, uh, also... This is a, a 946 Mason poster. This is from the 946 days. This is an older poster here. Uh, Immortal Flesh, Waste Form, Infantaphasia, and Sever. I have no idea who any of these bands are. Uh, Red Fox Army Brigade, and Irradiated Beef. That's Mr. Ormsby himself. Uh, this looks like a Jason Ormsby poster. I would not be surprised if he made this for this show. And isn't it telling that shows... Uh, some of the shows are $3, some are $5. Plattsburgh shows have rarely gone over a $5 cover charge in the last uh, 20 years, it seems. There's a winter solstice celebration at the Rota Gallery. And some uh, pagan stuff here. Uh, a a drop-off poster for the really, really free market. This was an event that I put together, and uh, over the years, other people took it on. And it was something that I was inspired when I saw other cities take it on. It's kind of a, a thing that people uh, take the mantle and they, they put together a, 
a market where everything is free. You just come in, you take what you need, and you, you don't take anything more than you need. And uh, that's an idea that I think that anybody should pick up and run with. Uh, it's one of those ideas that belongs to the people. And people should do it. The Spring Rummage Sale at the UU Fellowship for Palmer. I love these posters and have seen many of them over the years. Although in the last three or four years, I haven't seen any. And I'm assuming that they are still happening, but the poster person is not doing them anymore. Which is a bit of a shame. Because I really, I love the work that went into this lettering. You know, it's, it, <laughs> it's, n a lot of this stuff is not great. All right, this is not a, a master class in graphic design by any means. This is, uh, this is just real people making stuff, trying to get the word out. You know, you'll see the lettering is, uh, you know, you can barely make out the word ship here, but it doesn't matter. People are doing what they can. Uh, we got another Rota Gallery show that this, this also feels like a Chris Rigsby, but I, I'm not sure about that one. It's got a Chris vibe to it, though, for some reason. Here we've got uh, Comrade Nixon's first show. I'm hoping that there's not too much glare on these. That's why I'm kind of pulling them up as I speak about them. Uh, two hombres who play original tunes who baffle all you buffoons will make you soil your pantaloons. Uh, your, your comrade will be... What does that say? We'll be playing live on Richmond Public Radio, summer 12th. Oh, so that's, that, that's an ad for Richmond Public Radio, but this is a... The first Comrade Nixon show, and I, I did uh, play in that band uh, for a while until, uh, well, the truth may be harder to find, but the, the story I heard going around is that my girlfriend made me quit playing in the band. Uh, is that true or not? I'm not sure. Uh, but be there, don't be a square. And also, Jimmy, Eddie, I'm not sure who the hell that is. Uh, this is a poster I made. Uh, relatively low effort. Uh, you can see all the effort went into the lettering here. And everything else is just like a, I don't know, I took a picture of a skeleton that someone else put more work into. <laughs> but Cannabase was a really incredible band that came to the Rota Gallery. Uh, two bassists with custom-made basses, and it was, it, you know, very technical, power violence-inspired, doom-type metal, and it was really, really something else, and... Uh, you know, I'm not going to speak on Long Cat, but Vicious Intent, some of the best death metal I've ever been able to see live. Irradiated Beef is a legend in their own right. And Nimbus Terrifics, that's the boys from Dead Radical from Scranton, Pennsylvania, doing, uh, doing more of that technical power violence grind stuff. Here we've got Emily Pearl and Miss Katrina as an art form coming to Rota Gallery. Uh, Miss Katrina, the sister of one Christopher Rigsby, Stott, Christopher Stott Rigsby. Uh... As an art form, I'm not sure who that is. I'm assuming that's a local if they're this low on the bill. Uh, again, this is a relatively quick flyer. You can tell they just kind of put it together. This, this almost looks like a Meg Risley with the lettering. Uh, but I do love these pictures of fish. I wonder where those are from. I'm sure that's a, a collage and not something that they actually drew. Here we've got the Masquerade Ball, A Night in Neverland, Pride 2014, presented by the House of Star. I think, I think that I worked this event. I think I worked sound there. Uh, here we've got uh, someone doing a Skrillex with a, some creepy tree. Motherfucking cray cray birthday, you shites. This tree is going to beat your ass at Ninja. I'm going to go all whomping willow on y'all. So this, uh, I think, was... I want to say this is... If it's not Travis's birthday, this was a birthday of maybe one Kimberly Cummins? Hard to say, but that that's a... I like the idea of doing a flyer for a birthday party. Uh, this is a poster I drew for coloring walls and shocker abuse at the monopole. Uh, relatively low effort, like once again. A lot, of these, a lot of these posters, I think a trend you'll see... You know, I can't speak for all artists, but especially for myself... Uh, Make it really fast <laughs> and uh, just get it out there as quickly as possible in the hope that anybody will come to the show. Art House 3. This is a series of uh, house show events that Garan Burton, local artist, uh, 
Garon Burton would put on. I'm not sure if he does them anymore, but basically it's a potluck and open house kind of art show where he opens his home as an art gallery. Uh, Thought Crime, live acoustic benefit for the failed Hollaback Plattsburgh initiative. Uh, I'm not going to speak on that either, but hey, we tried. Uh, I think I made this too. Again, I, you know, I, there, there's graphic designers and posters who I, you know, I, graphic designers and posters and images, you know, throughout the ages that I look to as an inspiration that I absolutely love um, as, you know, as, as works of art. But the reason I hang on to stuff like this uh, isn't because it's an incredible work of art, but it's because it's a, one of the most honest and earnest documents of people communicating what's happening that you're going to find. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, here's a night of music at the coffee cat with Tyler Purcell. I have no idea who that is. I probably know. I probably do know them. Just don't know their last name is what I'm guessing. Super, super serious. Please don't laugh band coloring walls and Marco Polio. That is myself at the coffee cat, a night of music and comedy. Oh, so Tyler's a comedian. Not, not sure who that is. Here's the art walk. Uh, this was uh, Plattsburgh's first weekends initiative that Man, I could say a couple things about that. I was I was with them during some of their their final uh, final moments as a as a unit, and I did not have a great experience. But I do love the effort that was put forth by some of the members. Uh, unfortunately, the group was not able to keep a lot of its core membership, and it 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 did you know dissolve. Uh, dog hospice. I I bought a dog hospice shirt at this show, uh, it, and it says. Uh, I think it says ass piss on it, and it's bright orange, and I really like it. This is a double flyer. This is two different shows. The, uh, mm, the seventh and the eighth, a Sunday, Monday, two for one. Doomstar is the acoustic counterpoint to Doomfuck, the electric improv band here in Plattsburgh. Susie Blue Flame at the Rota Gallery. Now, this is a style of poster that you'll see usually older musicians put together this sort of thing that is almost like a mix between a press release and a flyer. Uh, I, I really like seeing this kind of thing, especially when it's mixed with... Um, I, I love seeing the corrections on here, and I love seeing the handwritten text. I, I just think that's like... It's so real. I don't know how else to put it. I mean, this is this is living, breathing event planning right here, you know? You got it. You got. You already put the flyer out. We changed the event time. Fuck it. Right. Go. Go walk around town. Right on the posters. This is definitely a Chris Rigsby right here. One. Uh. Paul Carson and Adrian Ardvark. Paul Carson is the owner of the local comic shop, uh, Fantastic Planet, but also a a really great songwriter. And the Vine Brothers is a folk trio that was on tour at the time. Uh. This is kind of done in a comic book cover style. Oh, there is Riggs. Christopher Stott Rigsby, 2014. Wake up, people. A march against corruption. Oh, remember when we thought that uh, this would help us? So this is uh, this is Anonymous, actually, is sponsoring this. But this is a... The march against corruption was, I think, uh, closely related to the Occupy movement that... I don't know. Hmm. What am I going to say? It was a noble effort. I, I hate that it uh, was uh, co-opted and crushed and destroyed. I believe everything they stood for, though. Uh, bringing it home for the Strand. Four shows, 22 legendary acts. A benefit to complete the Strand Theater restoration. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, my cat is walking through the shot right now. Uh, I didn't go to this. Roller Derby. Uh, I, I want to say Mikey Lemieux uh, of, of Boyer Benner. Uh, fame and also uh, I think Mikey what was Mikey on Hello Control? Uh, I think Mikey did all these roller derby posters. Although, depending on when this is from, uh, he may have not been the person doing them. But I always thought the roller derby, the lo local roller derby, uh, always had some very nice, inventive posters. And I liked they always did photo shoots. Not always, but often did photo shoots uh, to accompany the posters. So you got some exclusive imagery of the performers here uh here we've got uh wow this one's a mess i made this and I, i'm looking at it and i can't understand what the fuck i was thinking uh a mix of some old photos i scanned 
and a drawing I did down here. This is Baby's first Photoshop. I don't know what I was thinking. I so this is two different shows. I tried to put two shows on one flyer, but this is a this is a, a giant hunk of text that if you look at it, I, I can't even begin to tell you what this is. I don't even care. Uh, this is a flyer. Adrian Ardvark, Mouse. That's of Mouse and the Love and Light Orchestra. That's uh, Meredith Graves of the uh, a Perfect Pussy fame. Brown Bird, who did not play on this show, and Marco Polio. I gotta say, I do love the checkerboard pattern underneath, and I assume this is like just some sort of uh, MS Paint thing the person did. Uh, easy access. Uh, the person gave us this flyer at the show. They didn't flyer for the show. They didn't advertise at all, and it was one of those shows where you, you show up. We were on tour. I think this is in Rhode Island. Uh, I, you know, I could be wrong. I think it's a... Uh, I think this was a show put on by the drummer from Ed Schrader's Music Beat. Ed Schrader? Ed Schrader's Music Beat? Is that, does that even sound real? Uh, I, I think this was at his home. I think he put this on as a favor to us. And, uh, I, you know, I love the gesture, but uh, definitely uh, <laughs> did not promote and did not... I don't think there was an opener for us, and uh, we played the show for him and his roommate, and it was awkward. I remember playing maybe three songs and saying, I'm done. Uh, Castle Rockmore. This is a house venue in Syracuse, New York, where I, I used to live in this house. This is Dustin Furniture, The Guest House, Hello Hellbop, and Cannonade. I don't know if any of these people are still performing. Uh, another uh, show from my home in Syracuse. Uh, this is a fire featuring this comic artist who I can't remember. Uh, Mo's Gigantic was on tour with Emotron. Shirts as pillows? I don't even know what that is, now that I think about it. Probably a local act that isn't around anymore. This is the first time I met the Emotron, and uh, god damn, I love that man. And everybody was so worried that he was going to piss and vomit all over the place, but he didn't. Although he did get butt naked and light his dick and balls on fire. Here's another flyer that's an example of a you know quick collage with some decent hand lettering. Uh, Punch was a really awesome female-fronted hardcore band, as if female-fronted is a genre of, oh, I know, I'm sorry. Uh, Coughing Fit was another really ripping hardcore band. I don't know about these other two groups, but I think they were both on tour. Uh, really good. Where is this? Come to Madison, Max, and Richie's birthday bash at Pearl Street. This might have been a house show. Oh, this is in Buffalo, I believe, actually. Uh, Burger Violence. Brown Sugar, one of the best American hardcore bands ever. One of the best New York State hardcore bands. Go look up Brown Sugar if you never heard them. And this is like pure punk rock and roll hardcore. This is an incredible hardcore band. And I don't mean hardcore in the, um, in the metal-tinged, new school, like, you know... Uh, metalcore kind of way. I mean, like, an, uh, you know, old-school American hardcore punk. Black Sheep Squadron. Black SS, my God. What a, again, uh, you know, maybe maybe takes the top spot, but if not, they're close second in terms of New York State hardcore bands. Uh, where was this? At the Westcott Community Center in Syracuse, New York. Uh, v Vialka. This is a, a show that happened at the Wayward Council, uh, a venue run, or at least opened and started by the now-disgraced Chris Clavin of Planet X Records fame. Uh, we played this show. We were the plus more. Uh, we being myself, one Sean Goodrow, and Sarah Mundy went on, went on tour. Chris, Chris, Chris Stott Rigsby was supposed to be on that tour, but it did not work out last minute. Uh, but we decided to forge ahead anyway, and uh, Vielka was on the tour from France. They had their baby with them. It was a <laughs> big trip for them to come to the States, and they were furious with the state of DIY in America, and the entire show, after an incredible performance by them, I don't think we played at all, uh, they proceeded to ream out the organizers of the show for an hour or more about how... It's disrespectful to book international bands and not do proper promotion and not give them proper accommodations like a place to crash or a bite to eat. Because if DIY is about, you know, taking care of people and accommodating them, you, you go play some some club, you're going to get drink tickets, you're going to get a meal comp or something, you're going to get cash, you're going to get hooked up. You know, it's 
it's standard. So if DIY is trying to, uh, you know, create alternatives, the least you could do is, you know, properly promote the show for a band that's coming all the way from France. My God. And uh, they, they just talked about how uh, American DIY and their experiences traveling across the country at that time was in a very sad fucking state that could not actually be any sort of viable alternative to mainstream, you know, music venues that usually have predatory practices and, you know, price gouging and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's like, you know, if we're trying to create something better, let's actually do better. Anyway, Paul, Paul Baraboo, Baraboo, Eric Ayotte, and The Boy Who Could Fly. I don't know who The Boy Who Could Fly is, uh, but this is a, this is one that Hell Hellbop created this flyer here. This is a really awesome show. It was great to see Paul and his uh, just, you know, playing solo guitar up in my attic. That was really sick. Uh, Sam Weir, No Connection, Red and Black and Mayflower. These are all Syracuse area pop punk bands. I think Sam Weir might have been from elsewhere. Who are these boys on this flyer? It's Gooseman's Birthday. I don't, I don't fucking know who these guys are, honestly. I, pro I, I have a vague memory of their faces from the Syracuse scene, but... At the Shark Tank in Oswego. Hmm. Syracuse New Year's Hardcore Show. This is always a big show. I think Earth Crisis played some of these shows. Uh, I want to say... Oh, God. Path of Resistance. Uh, Wisdom and Chains. Is that what I'm thinking of? Anyway, there's been a lot of uh, bands. I think FC5 came all the way from Japan. Yeah, that's right. Attitude, I remember these guys were real assholes, uh, did not like the way they treated people or the way they talked, and uh, maybe they were just young and dumb, but they left a real bad taste in my mouth. Black SS, incredible. Verse, never listened to them. Charge, no idols, those are, those are some great Syracuse area bands. Well, Charge might not be from Syracuse now that I think about it. Anyway, these, uh, these were at the Westcott Community Center. The Syracuse New, Year, New Year's Hardcore Shows were always uh, an event to witness, and I'm not sure if they still happen, because I don't live in Syracuse. Don't keep up on the scene. Insubordinates. These are the folks uh, that I think are playing in... Uh, I want to say they were on tour with the Televisionaries. Uh, or they are the same people. I'm not sure. But this, this is a Rochester band. I, I thought they had a real neat little tour poster here with the rounded edges and the TV and everything. Uh, you know, again, not not extremely high effort, not high art, but, you know, this is, a, this is a pretty cool way to use pretty simple imagery to do something effective. This is uh, one of the best shows I've ever seen ever. We've got Girls of Porn, who's Albany area, or Buffalo, I thought they were from Albany. I mean, I think this person has relocated to Albany. Uh, Trapped in Cocaine Nightmare is a band I was in for a short time. Uh, Severed Head Sarcophagus, I don't remember them at all. Rochester Black Metal. But Infernal Stronghold is one of the best black metal bands I've ever witnessed, listened to, whatever. My God, incredible. If you haven't heard Infernal Stronghold, love them. Please, look them up. This was uh, at the Westcott Community Center. We got asked to play this show. It was a noise show. For some reason, they had a they, 315 thrashy punk craziness. This was a band I used to sing you know, and play guitar in with a drummer who would also sing, play drums. We both played, we both wrote the songs. You know, I'd play the guitar, he'd play the drums. We both played guitar and wrote the songs. Uh, we did not fit in on this show at all, and it was very fucking awkward, and I did not like any of the noise acts. But it was nice they invited us. Engineer and Tombs. This is, this is more Syracuse area hardcore stuff. Uh, the Spark Art Gallery, which was uh, an offshoot of something I think involved with the uh, Syracuse campus, Syracuse University. Rochester Punk Show, Raw Sewage, Raunchy Sex, Deathless Five, Black Bridge, and 44 Caliber Killers at the AV space. I, I want to say that this was a pretty fun show, to my memory. This is one of my first out-of-town shows I ever played, back when I was in the Deathless Five. I also want to say, I think that 44 Caliber Killers... Uh, have a enormous logo <laughs> on this flyer. Larcenist, Goodnight Neverland, Maddie Garrett, Marco Polio, and Trinesky. At the Raven? I couldn't tell you I remember this show at all. Uh, here's a really rough flyer I made where I, I clearly spent about uh, 10 seconds making this. Drink up some punks rock. I think I was trying to be funny. 
These people are, are drinking, you know, uh, out of different vessels. Uh, no one came to this fucking show. Ah, Viking Moses, who uh, is still around to this day. Uh, Toby Foster, Dust in the Furniture, a drum and an open window and Hello Hillbop at the Castle Rockmore. I made this flyer because I thought this is a really cute picture of a lady with a dog. Achilles, this is a hex flyer. Uh, a lot of these are hex flyers, these Syracuse flyers. Hex from Hex Records. Uh, Ryan. 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 Uh, Ryan C. Can't remember his last name fully. Achilles. And Freya. Freya was a offshoot of Earth Crisis. Tides. Romans like wolves. Twerk. 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 Twerk I don't care. Bands that I don't remember. But I like looking at the posters. It's fun. Uh, Stamp Out Stigma Concert, Doomfuck, Sinecure, Julie Canapa and Tim Hartnett, The Misfits Tribute, which later became Return of the Fly, Julian Jasper, who I I think is an early uh, stage name of, of uh, Allison Jaster. Jasper, I, don't, I, I could be wrong about that. I, that could even be a typo. And The Roosters, Russ Bailey, Fron Pope, uh, now of the uh, Crow Party. Uh, I think these guys are also an alien rednecks. Uh, long time local blues musicians incredible guys this was an awesome show and i hit my first marijuana vapor like oil pen at this show and this must have been 2011 block party summer block party at the nccca art center music art fun for all ages uh kim cummins organized this i may have been a co coordinator in this event or it may have been one she done by herself i did eventually hop on to helping out with this event Eventually, the NCCCA, the North Country Cultural Center for the Arts, uh, Arts Center. I guess I don't know what NCCCA means. Unless it is North Country Cultural Center for the Arts, Arts Center. Could be, with the way things are. Uh, they, I, I went to one of the first meetings about either this event or the one that happened the following year. And it was no questions asked. Yes, let's do it. This is beautiful. Great, great family-friendly, fun event. The next year, uh, it became, you know, a uh, different leadership, and they said, no, we, uh, we will not do that event with you. Um, so, eh, fuck them. They're, they're, they're barely solvent at this point. Probably because of that sort of attitude. Hit the books. Booksmart Thrashcore from Boston. Don't remember them. Ambush uh, was a great grind crust band from Syracuse. Oak and Bone, another really incredible Syracuse area band. Although, I gotta say... I never felt like their albums did their live performances justice, and that's something that always hurts me when I have a band that I love seeing live, and then they put out a 7-inch or something, and it, it just doesn't hit me the right way. I go, well, that memory is lost to time. And then, you know, 10 years later, I'll put on the 7-inch, and it'll be really good, and I'll go, ah, you know, the 7-inch is really great, uh, whereas a, a live performance can only exist as a moment in time, unless it's, you know, being recorded. Uh, uh, a studio album can last for much longer. So it's good if they, you know, it's good if you can revisit them, they still sound good. Does that make sense? It's nice, it's nice when you don't like a record at first, but, you know, later you can go back to it and, and, and it connects with you in a new way, I guess. Uh, House on a Spring, original conscious American roots reggae dub and hip hop at the Monopole. Herbie One presented this. Wow, I wonder who that is. Uh, des the design was by Farah Nicholas at Yahoo.com. So if you need someone to do a design for you, uh, you can hit them up. Here we've got War Vomit uh, with Omnisile System, Graveyard Hounds, and the Ghouls. Graveyard Hounds, is, I believe, was a Syracuse area rockabilly band. The Ghouls, no idea. War Vomit was straight up D-beat, like Discharge. Uh, Omnisile System, uh, Shayna and Gabe, and I think Justin... Uh, we're in that band. It was a, a, a trio there. Shayna on vocals, Gabe on guitar, and I think I think Justin on drums. And they may have had other drummers over the years. Uh, incredible band. I really love this band. Man, I love that band. Those people are still around. I'm not sure if they're making music. A night of angry beats and dangerous sounds. Hip hop and folk punk. Uh, Hello Hell Pop played this show, which is funny to me. This was at the Spark. I Reels, DJ Afar, Testament, Revolutionary... No idea. This is a, a goofy-ass flyer to me. A group of friends from Syracuse Solidarity Network. The Syracuse Solidarity Network was a sort of anarchist, uh, you know, far-left uh, 
Solidarity Network, I suppose? I don't know. Eh, everyone's trying to save the world. Cult Ritual, uh, a band that was really great, but I think I had a panic attack at this show and went to get a slice of pizza and didn't watch them play. The Murder Junkies. I didn't go to this um, because I heard that uh, that the Murder Junkies were uh, dangerous, and I think I was uh, really young when this happened. I felt like, I don't know. So this is a... Uh, Murder Junkies are, are the band that Gigi Allen performed with uh, at the time of his death. You know, and they, they, keep, the, uh, they keep the flame alive. Eh. No Fucker was uh, another D-beat band from the Syracuse area that... Uh, they did they did a split with some international bands and stuff. They 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 went around. They toured a lot. They they were mildly successful for a D-beat band, I'd say. This looks like another he hex fire. Uh, violent side. People from Black SS and Forfeit. I don't know if I have any recordings of that band, and I don't know if I ever saw them. Now I'm real curious. Violent side. Uh. This is a flyer I made when I uh, made 2007, I want to say. Uh, this is Baby's first Photoshop. You can tell I, I discovered that Photoshop effect in the back and said, whoa, that's the way to go. Uh, when shit hits the fan, local acoustic folk punk. No idea who that is. But again, Omnisile System. That was when I was falling in love with this band. And the riot before... The Riot Before, they got around a lot. You probably, you know, if you if you were at DIY shows around this time, you probably saw that band on flyers or saw them live. Plows, Oak and Bone, Deathless 5. It's funny that we're above Deathless 5 on this listing. Oak and Bone was the better band at this point. I uh, spoke about the Disgraced. Uh, Chris, Chris Clavin, so uh, Ghost Mice did play the show, and the organizer of the show, who I believe was uh, Sill from Hell Hell Bop, was kind enough to let the plurals hop on. The plurals is a American rock band that is real, real incredible. And I, I do believe I made this flyer. This looks like my handwriting from that time. And uh, this is again one of those really low effort fi flyers. Uh, I got the typewriter out, the descriptions, wrote down the band names, and slapped it on a single image. That you know, what is this flyer even trying to say? What you know, is this a statement about war? Come on, do better. Me. Plattsburgh Roller Derby Flyer. They're looking for uh, fresh meat. The weekend wind down with the uh, low five felons. We got one Alex Davis, Zach Serprenant, and... Ooh, wow, I cannot remember this dude's name. He was funky on the bass, though. Chris? Chris Purcell? I could be wrong. Uh, improv, chill jams, and live art at SUNY Plattsburgh in the Cardinal Lounge. That's a 2.30 p.m. show. My god. Lo-Fi Felons is a really awesome, uh, improv hip-hop trio. And sometimes Alex would hop on the synth, provide some live keys. Here's another unmistakable hex fire. Marco Polio playing with, uh, Moons Over Montezuma and a special TBA guest at the Dungeon. Uh, I have seen this flyer reused. I have played on several shows where they've used this image. That's the Attack of the 50-Foot Woman, I believe. Uh, I've played on so many shows where they fucking use this same image over and over and over. This show was at a weird venue that was like a, you know, like a, I don't know, like a converted fun center kind of event space. You know, like a... I don't know, like an arcade almost, with like batting cages and shit, from my memory. But they had a really great Neo Geo collection. Look. <laughs> there, there's the, uh... Where is this? This is at... I don't know where this is. This is a house show in Watertown? But, uh, there's the same goddamn picture. The Mountain Goats. This is one of the first times I saw the Mountain Goats live, if not the first time... This was on the Get Lonely Tour, I believe, and was a show, uh, yes, this was get, the Get Lonely Tour. It was before, it was before Heretic Pride came out, and he played some new songs that were going to wind up on the Heretic Pride album, I believe, and I took a video of it, and I didn't realize that he was looking at me and, and shaking his head, no, 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 stop, no, because... 
he was playing the new songs for the people who were there. He didn't want to post on the internet. And after I found that out, I later emailed him apologizing. He was kind and said, oh, it's all right. Just please don't post it till after the record comes out. Just please don't do be a dick. Total abuse, culture shock, homicidal system. Death is easy. That's uh, This is uh, some Syracuse area hardcore mixed with some Albany area hardcore. That's uh, Jason Crack, his band. 560 Allen was a house venue in Syracuse. Nancy... I don't know any of these bands. Black SS. Black SS. Man, Club Discharge in Utica. I don't remember that place at all. That's that's something. This, this is really something. That is a punk show flyer if I ever saw one. An early 2000s punk show flyer. Mannequin Headhunters. That was a... I want to say a Watertown or Utica or, you know, just out of Binghamton, maybe. I think it was outside of Syracuse area punk band that I have some of their demo recordings. I never heard this CD. I'd love to hear that if I could. No followers, Syracuse street punks. These guys got into a lot of shit for being for being street punks. Uh, more on the system. Drunk. I have no idea what that is. Radgast? Radagast? No idea. I'm showing my ignorance of some of these flyers. Although, you know, at the time, and here, here's something funny. The War Vomit logo just looks like the background art. I didn't even see it there on the show. The Puke Punks presented this show. I wonder if that's an early edition of the Syracuse Punks, Drunks, and Skins. Uh, you know, some of this stuff. Oh, Hellbomb is another band that was on the show, I believe. No, photos of the Hellbomb. I think that War Vomit eventually turned into Hellbomb. And they may have been inspired by this very flyer. But some of this stuff was, uh, you know, well over 10 years ago at this point. I can't, I can't be bothered to remember it all. It's a very gruesome flyer. I'm not sure if this image is coming across there, but... Some Disney characters uh, getting... clear. Seemingly like they're about to get beheaded. Uh, Nine Shocks Terror, more classic hardcore. Black Mast was a, an offshoot of Black SS, or at least I, I think it still had uh, Chuck on vocals. It was a... I'm not sure if it had any other members. This looks like a Sarah Mundy flyer. Oh, this could also be... Actually, this is not Sarah Mundy. I'm wrong. This is a flyer that was made by Samantha Allen. Deviant Loners uh, is the band that came after Death is Easy. We just saw them a few pages back. Trinity Park Radio is still around. Coughing Fit, that's Albany area hardcore. Withered Remains was local black metal. They are not around anymore. And this is at 30 Marion Street beneath Olive Ridley's where the gay bar used to be in the 90s. Uh, this is a short-lived DIY venue, but uh, we did several shows there. Uh, I did maybe two or three, and then I think the boys in Lie Captive did one or two. And then they started asking for a 50% cut of the door uh, when the original plan was an 80-20 split, then a 30-70, then a 60-40, and then they eventually went to a 50-50. Here's a repeat. Here's another uh, crow, pa crow party flyer at My Cup of Tea, which was a tea and tiny sandwich shop that was, uh, it's where it's where the uh, Rota Gallery eventually was and where the um, Bagel Pit now resides. I'm not sure the fate of the Bagel Pit. 8 to 10 P. <laughs> P, as in PM. Get it? Uh, Low Five Felons present Wacky Weekend. Uh, no, no other, no other information needed there. Just know that it is the wacky weekend. Here's a really shitty flyer I did of <laughs> Larry David inside of, uh, abstract art. The fuck was I thinking? Sam Cooper was a great songwriter. I wonder if he's still around. This, this looks like an Oswego flyer. Yep, Oswego. Eric Ayotte, Paul Barbo. Hey. More Oswego flyers. Barbarossa Records, they weren't around for very long. Uh, if I recall, the person who ran this label turned out to be a uh, abuser that was chased out of the scene. I could be wrong about that, though, so don't quote me. This is a ceremony original. Hello, November, and Marco Polio at the Coffee Cat. I think there's a video of this very show on the, uh, on the old YouTube. Free Park Fest 4 in Liverpool, New York. Is this all the bands? That's a that's a bad flyer. That's hard to look at. 
Uh, speaking of hard to look at, this one's also hard to look at. This was a, and you can tell they they had uh, characters in the font that weren't there, and so those come out as those weird rectangles. Uh, the cops got called on this show, but they didn't shy it down. Maybe because we're all white. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure who made this flyer, but this is where I first met Jordan Mason. Uh, the mini 420 Folk Fest this is where I also first met the folks in Klesa. Uh, the folks in Sarah D, who some of those folks were in traveling with Klesa and Jordan. They all played in Jordan, Jordan Mason and the Horsehead Museum. I actually messaged Jordan about this and said, was it ever called the Horsehead Museum? It wasn't. That was just a typo on the flyer. Dan Cafferty made this flyer, I believe. DMC. Uh, this is another Hex flyer, I believe. Slingshot Dakota. People love that band. Uh, I, I thought they'd be real ripping live. That's another band who I saw live, thought it was great, and then I didn't love their record. But, it, you know, they're very successful, despite my <laughs> thoughts on their album. But, man, uh, live, they, they really brought it for me. Sexy Dub at Basha Lounge with DJ Alexander Davis. PyramidPendulum.com, uh, where they dropped a lot of world premieres on that website. Basha was a hookah lounge that, uh, 103 Margaret is where Aleka's, the Greek restaurant, is now. Man. Boy, I got kicked out of there. Uh, more Syracuse hardcore. This is, uh, that's Mike. It's Mike in some weird bondage-looking situation. This looks like a big inside joke just turned into a flyer. Minor Times, Engineer. This also looks like a hex. Oh, hanging. <laughs> hanging like a hex. Hanging hex at highmail.com. Uh, not sure who made this flyer. This looks like the folks in Klesa may have... This looks like it could be uh, Kate Larson made this flyer. This was at a library, wasn't it? It was at the library. Uh, Chernesky was uh, drinking out of a paper bag at this show, and people asked him to leave. He didn't leave. Late Night Nate's Midnight Movies. Now that brings back memories. Uh, Honest Sons, All the Rage, and Plow the Abyss at Rota Gallery. Honest Sons, no idea. All the Rage, uh, and Plow the Abyss was around for a while. They might even still be active or active in some form as individuals i i'm well i'm i know some of them definitely are all the rage was a, a band that i really loved watching live uh here's a here's a, this is a kate larson original i believe uh this was a really nice show and i love this image of this uh piano and it was really nice to walk up to the house and have this poster on the door and go hey that's pretty good Here's a flyer that's real hard to read. <laughs> that's another hex flyer, I'm sure. Uh, this also looks like a hex flyer. Man, hex, hex, uh, what is that guy? Like booking shows or something? The Brutal Art Hop After Party. Uh, this is at the Art Hop in, uh, in Burlington, Vermont, I want to believe. I, I think, yeah, 420 Pine Street. I met some folks here who I still know to this day. I was playing in APM at that time, and uh, this was awesome. Uh, this is my first time in Burlington. I didn't I didn't come back up to Burlington for you know years after that. But Black SS, Vitamin X, I Object, Poison Planet. This is a show that started in the living room, went down to went up to the attic, and because there was uh, so many people there for to see Vitamin X uh, and the other bands. I mean, Jesus Christ, this is a stacked fucking lineup. Uh, the floor started to cave in, so we had to go down to the basement. Uh, the cops got called, but they did not shut the show down. We were able to talk them out of shutting it down and just let us turn it down, uh, because we were almost done. Cops were somewhat amazed that we were able to fit that many people in such a small space. It was clearly very illegal. And, uh, somebody did a big multi-cam recording of this show and never released the footage, and I, I'm still kind of pissy about that. The Neon Hookers. Don't remember this, but I do remember Susie Wong and the Honkies, even though I think it says Sozy Wong and the Honkies. Uh, this is a cute little flyer, Slingshot Dakota. This also looks like a Oswego 
Oh, it's New York City. I don't know why I'd have that. Summer people. I remember them. Uh, punk show. Terrorists. The accents. Bank and headhunters. No fucking rules. They cross out the F word on the flyer. Six shot standoff and skeleton crew at the American Legion. This is maybe the second show I ever played ever. And no followers there. This is all the non-hardcore Syracuse area punk bands from like 2004, whatever, all at one, all in one show. God, 3, 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. What a fucking ridiculous idea. Show tonight, 560 Allen. Oceans. I think Oceans uh, is the band that uh, Easy Access, the guy from Ed Schrader Music Video. I think that was his band. Yeah, I think I think Oceans is this dude's band. The Riot Before. VMT. Man, I, I made this too. I just stole the Akira art. Blank Stare, Like Rats, No Connection, Reckless Days. Oakland Bone, clearly did not play this show. Carl Blau and Lake. Uh, I did not love Carl Blau, but Lake blew my fucking mind. Uh, what a live band. What a band. I'm glad they're they're doing stuff. This is really wild. We This was a, a, an, a, a shut-down hotel where it seemed... It was an old-timey, enormous, old, fancy hotel in... Uh, Cootersport, Pennsylvania. Someone at some point had some wealth, owned this hotel, it was shut down, and it just seemed like it was a clubhouse for these people that did shows there. Incredible, 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 incredible. Uh, Mountain Goats. This looks like it's a straight out of MS uh, Word or Doc or whatever, Microsoft Documents, MS Word. This clip art up here is a, is a dead giveaway to me, and the papyrus font. Wow. <laughs> nice Christian death shirt on, on John there. Marco Polio. Penal Aon? I think these are Albany area rappers. Penal and Aon. Uh, I always thought Penal was not uh, a great name for a rapper. Immaculate uh, is now Big Sco. Phonics is Phonics Dark. Papa Bear. Uh, he's not around the area anymore. I, I played this show. This is a this is a hip hop show that I got asked to do. It was also a free concert in Can Drive. You got the Pendulum Pyramid Man, the Pyramid Pendulum person here, located in the ACC. That's the Angel College Center behind the subway, hosted by Alex Davis. The Quake presented this. Uh, man, that was awkward for me, but I, I enjoyed it. Shock Nagasaki was a cool band from Syracuse. Boris Karloff, I didn't love it. More Syracuse punk. Attica, Attica. Don't remember them at all. Bridge and Tunnel. Sort of remember them. Subpixel. Sarah Mundy. 14 Mall by your street. Bring a pal. Oh, I thought I said bring a pal. Bring a pal. Why not bring a pal? Subpixel is Matt Ross. And it was him doing chip tunes with live instruments as well. And it was really, really incredible. Uh, Nazi Dust, Trapped in Cocaine, Nightmare Like Wolves. This is the last show I played in Syracuse before moving away. This looks like some weird Nazi imagery. Again, I think the person who put the show on has been driven out of several hardcore scenes. Uh, my, my late father came to this show after my estranged late father. Uh, and after seeing my set, he goes, Wow, if I knew you sound like that, I wouldn't have paid to get in. And uh, we didn't talk much more after that. That was one of my few handful of interactions with that man uh here's more syracuse area hardcore playing uh in oneonta neutron rats and albany band those folks are in a thousand other bands over the years it's a real creepy ass lo-fi felons poster here free juice special guests and live art more uh syracuse area punk Trapped in Cocaine Nightmare. MCM building on Fox Road. I gotta say, I have zero memory of this. But I do love when a flyer says no drinking and no drugs. 
the Lorax, aka Julian Jaster, with no one else. Hey, that's ambitious. Uh, <laughs> I love that they're uh, using the Ninja Turtles font here. This is a really fun house show. I remember it ended with a woman uh, grabbing the guitar after everybody was hanging out, drinking, you know, doing some brews. It was a college house party. And she said, let's do improvised uh, blues music about our sexual history. And, and the, that cleared the party out real fast. She did not read the room. That's where I met Joey Todd, I believe. Yeah, and Tom Joyce and Ryan Ashe. Well, Peter House and I had been acquaintances for years. And even friends. Uh, coming soon to Castle Rockmore, this is something where I tried to put a bunch of shows on one easy-to-find listing that could be a quarter sheet, or half sheet in this case, that could be handed out at shows. Uh, who knows if this helped or not. Anything interesting on there? Not really. Uh, wow, this is hard to see. What is this? The Waking Life? It's a showing of The Waking Life by... Fugue? CNY's Emer... I can't... Emergent? Emergent, yes. Philosophical Society. I will bet that the uh, Emergent... The Emergent Philosophical Society there, Fugue, uh, didn't last more than a year. Here's a flyer I made for a cluster show. That was, that was a fun show. Uh, Cancer. The Gammas. Gorilla Activity. I don't remember any of these bands. At the Dungeon... I think this is Watertown Punk. It's a larger version of the Cult Ritual Flyer. Marco Polio, Adam Barksdale, Rob Button. <sighs> Fuck if I remember that show. The Zombie Prom. This is a uh, Zombie Walk Zombie Prom. That, 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 this looks like an old school Corey Collins flyer right here. Uh, Waffle Frolic. This is a Meg Grizzly original. This is a really great event. It was a waffle breakfast. Uh, wing night canceled. Fooled again. You can eat great wings and catch Plattsburgh's premier cover band, Neil Young and Crazy Hoss, every Wednesday open mic night at the Monopole. This is a series of flyers I did with Sean Goodrow uh, to promote our uh, really mean, really rude joke band, Neil Young and Crazy Hoss, that was uh, invading open mic every week. Creep Show 3. This is another House of Star flyer, I believe. Yes, it is. At the old Gilligan's Getaway. It's one of the first Plattsburgh shows I played. Uh, Discount Dollar Dudes Fest with Madden Touchdown Pass, AA, Marco Polio, Chris Ostuni. That's a fun show. That was in the upstairs room of the co-op, and I couldn't believe that it was almost, you know, at capacity. Plattsburgh, uh, after I moved here, I never saw shows get that big again outside of the occasional heavy metal show. Uh, although this was a very mixed genre show. I should say, I'd never seen mixed... Plattsburgh seems like it's always been able to bring people out for metal. Uh... Never seen mixed genre shows do this well. Maybe it's because I fucked it up. Uh, Alex Davis and Luke Brown's ba Basha Birthday Bonanza. There, there's me's. You'll see. You might see yourself in this pyramid. Wow. What a flyer. This is back when uh, Basha was on 50 Clinton Street before they moved to Margaret Street. Boy, that was that was something. I played guitar out of a PA speaker <laughs> with a distortion pedal because I couldn't find an amp. More Waffle Frolic stuff. This one's at the food co-op instead of at the former uh, soup company. Reckless Day is Knuckle Dragger. This looks like a Hex Flyer. Also looks like a Daniel Cafferty Flyer, so I'm not sure. More Syracuse Folk Punk. Eric Ayat jumped onto the show. Eric Ayat, great singer-songwriter. Where is he from? I don't know. I think he's from New York. This is a big New Year's Day hardcore show. Oh, Path Resistance, like I mentioned. Man, I object. What a fucking band. GDP with D Vice. That's uh, Alex Davis. This is the first show I booked when I moved up here. Uh, literally one person came and paid. That was a really a big bummer. This is at the former coffee camp. GDP uh, later went on to do a split 7-inch with the front bottoms. A lot of people think he's real hip. Uh, one of my favorite MCs, and I, I'm, I'm still bummed that nobody would even give him a shot. <laughs> uh, more Syracuse Hardcore. Food Day. 
Another, another waffle frolic flyer. Love those drawings of waffles. Uh, Crazy Spirit, Long Pigs, and Shoppers at the Halfpenny Pub. Someone asked, oh, I love her. Is she going to be at the flyer? No, Grace, or is she going to be at the show? Grace Jones did not go to that show. That's a Daniel Cafferty flyer, it looks like. Mistletoe, Olden Witches, the Andrea Doria, and Impure Jazz. Off of their heads and no connection. Some pop punk. Magruder Grind. It's another show where the floor almost caved in. Can't believe we made it out of that one alive. Deconstruction at the Halfpenny Pub. This is a punk night. APM, hijinks, Albanian punk. Wow, all the way from all Albania. Spoonful of Vicodin, amazing. Rochester area hardcore. Power violence, you know, two-piece grindy power violence. Real live hip-hop at the Quake with me. There's a drawing of me. Uh, this is an Alex Davis flyer. I, I think this flyer is fucking sick. I love this drawing. I... I just the lettering and everything, like the, the music notes with mouths, the instruments. I think it's real cool. Uh, another size, the Carl Blau Lake Flyer. There's a Bergy <laughs> repping the real live hip hop events. There's a cheap way to do a flyer. Throw a couple things on top of the uh, scanner or photocopier and just fucking, you know. There you, there's your image. Black SS was a Halloween show. Yeah, my God. Brains was a fun band. They were kind of like synth punk. Open Bone. Dra drought. Burger Violence. Don't remember any of these guys. Rochester stuff, I don't know. Baltimore String Felons with Thimblewit and Chernesky. This is uh, an old-timey folk punk kind of show. Uh, this, I think, is the first show I ever played at Kenny Dick's Barn in, in uh, outside of Syracuse. CDs will be on sale. CDs nuts. Euphobia was a Christian pop punk band. They were Blink-182 tribute, but they were Christian. Westing Game, I think, was an emo hardcore band. Mac and Headhunters, punk rock. Defect and BLT, I don't remember. Something we're saving, I don't remember. But Skeleton Crew was the shitty, shitty uh, pop punk kind of no effects ripoff band that I was in at the time. God damn, you got enough fonts on this fucking flyer, dude? Uh, Lemuria. People like that band. I'm moving a little faster now. Uh, for the kid in the back, Rocky Rock, Knitting Club, Jared Britt. This is a Jason Ormsby flyer for a Coffee Cat show, downtown Plattsburgh. Is that Cornell West? It is. This must have been a live stream event. I don't think Cornell West came to the area. Punk show. This flyer is real hard to look at. I'm having a hard time understanding what's going on there, actually. Wow, that's a classic looking punk show flyer. Jesus Christ. I love that. Omnisau System again. Great band. Club Polski was the Polish Citizens Club. Had an enormous auditorium with a bar and then a bar downstairs with a bowling alley. What a fucking sick venue. Cicada, Jefferson Plane Crash, Oak and Bone. Castle Rockmore, that's a hex flyer. This also looks like a hex flyer. I wonder if he did the illustrations on these or if he just collaged them. Hmm. I could ask him, but I won't. Marco Polio, Adrian Aardvark, Caboose, Tenderflint at the Embassy Vinyl in Scranton, PA. The guys from Dead Radical, Nimbus Terrifics, uh, Jeff. Jeff, whose last name I cannot pronounce nor remember. Uh, I think it was actually a Polish last name. Uh, set the show up for us and it was really sick. Blind Owl Band at the Monopole. Original string music. These guys are still kicking, I believe. Hardcore Punk Showcase with Punch, Dry Heave, False Positive, 560 Allen Street. Man, Punch was sick. Yeah, bud. <laughs> this is a classic North Country band jam night kind of show. Gad About Film Festival. If you know, you know. I'm not going to explain the whole concept. Another Syracuse area folk punk show. Here's another fall rummage sale poster for the UU. The the you know the, I I posted the I showed the uh, poster for the spring one earlier. It's a poster I made for the Food Not Bombs Syracuse chapter. That was a short-lived effort. 
Uh, at least my involvement with it was. It, it went on. It, you know, those things ebb and flow. This is a flyer I made for a yard sale that I did with Liz Allen. <laughs> uh, coloring walls, irradiated beef, and TPR at the Rota Gallery. This looks like a... I can't tell if this is a, a Schultz or a Shifley. Maybe a collab. Doomfuck. Teenage Shred implode the abyss at a punk rock metal night. This one of the first punk nights I did at Monopole. Uh, they they did not want to do punk or metal when I started trying to book those shows there. And now the metal nights are one of the most successful events they have. And I'm glad they have finally opened up their minds. Uh, because you opened up your wallets. That is, that is what makes shows go at the bar. There's a safe trick-or-treat event. There's a, there's a special thought crime poster for the Rota Gallery. And Invasive Species. No idea who that is. Here's a larger version of that really horrifying hip-hop uh, Bergie flyer that Alex Davis made. I love that. Amber Flora Thomas, award-winning poet. Dylan Suttles. Dylan Suttles came up to Plattsburgh, played with, played with Justin. Played with Bridge Under Fire. I think that's like a Mark, I think that might be that guy's name. We did a LGBT, LGBT arts uh, celebration national in honor of National Coming Out Month at the Rota Gallery. It's a paper making thing, I think. Shows like this, I, it's like Cal Folger Day with her band. No idea who that is. Don't remember that at all. Young Leaves, Marco Polio, Betty Nico. I don't remember this either. This looks like a Justin Pass no fire or a Chris Rigsby fire. That's a Megan Resley Photoshop job. Jury Dart Show. D. Lawrence, Matt Hall, and Kim LeClaire at the Treehouse, Northampton, Massachusetts. That was something to behold. <coughs> Listen up, bodies and ghouls. Auburn Extreme Entertainment LLC probably brings you an e evening of irreverent acoustic music to rock your Halloweeners too. There'll be thrills and chills as two of New York's finest acts will not only titillate you with their rustic melodies, but surprise you around every bend. You will not want to miss this one, Plattsburghers. This was Fright Night with Chernowski and Peter House at the Coffee Cat. The Great has informed us that this is not a masquerade show and only he is allowed to don a Halloween costume. Peter House can too if he goes on not as Speed Racer, but that other cartoon character that looked like Speed Racer. I think he means Racer X, possibly. Wikipedia it because I am an intern and I don't get paid to. Also, he insisted on saying, rock your Halloweeners. Uh, there's a lot of meta humor inside this poster that I, I'm not sure if, if people would catch on at first glance. Wow, I did not try very hard on this flyer. Can you tell that I was stressed and, and uh, short on time when I made this fucking piece of shit? God, that's a trash flyer. Here's two more not great flyers I made. What up, dog? What the fuck was I thinking? This is a trash flyer, too. I'm sorry. Sorry that I fucked these flyers up so bad. This one's not as shitty. This one's all right, actually. I'm not embarrassed by that one. Uh, candle benefit for Rhoda. We were trying to keep the lights on, so we did some candle lit benefit shows. It didn't save us. <laughs> Here's another uh, another not great show I did. An evening of acoustic music by Candle. Is it the same show? January 25th, Friday, May 10th. No, look, five months later, we were at it again with another candle lit show. Mumbler. Hey, this is the flyer I was asked to see if I could find. Mumbler with special guests. Uh, the Skin Cells and Heather Gray. I am going to pull this one out. So I can send it to the person who requested it. Uh, wow, that's another shitty flyer I made. I, I must have been... <laughs> what the fuck was I thinking there? That's some garbage. Uh, among Your Friends. Hello, Shark. The Rota Gallery. Hello, Shark, who somehow put out the same album for seven years straight. Uh, live Punk Rock. When? Friday at the Rota. Tarred and Feathered. The Soap. Bleeding Trees. I don't remember any of these. Don't remember any of those bands. Bored. Overworked. Feeling Trapped. Rota Has the Cure. Everending Kicks. Adrian Arvark. Marco Polio. Hmm. Was it really the cure? We'll, we'll never know. That's kind of cute. I made that one too. 
Dead Grass. Source of the Flow at Rhoda. Average looking mulligans. Average looking mulligans. That rings a bell, but I'm not sure why. Uh, Doomfuck, Mouthbreather, Longcat at the Waterhole. They did not do a lot of punk shows at the Waterhole. Sarah Sentry, Vicious Women, Marco Polio. I drew a cowboy. It's one of those shows I said yes to booking, and I, I shouldn't have. No one wanted to see that show. Truth be told, the Ambulance Review and Kyle Hart. This is like a local alt-rock and pop-punk show. That was a fun show. Dan Gallagher and Will Shifley in the Cougar Den. So at one point, the folks at Clinton Community College reached out to me to do a series of concerts. I think I did one or two, two or three, and uh, they were not happy with how I was doing, and they nixed the deal. Man, these guys put on a great performance. Tom Braga, re reading some poetry. Uh, local poet, very prolific. Don't remember this show. Cutthroat Logic, Tire Fire, All the Rage, Mile 97, Turn the Fly, Long Cat. I like this fire, you can see the tape is still on it. Here's four different flyers for the same show. Hmm. All right, these are all from around the same time. I'm using the same exact collage technique on all these. I have less to say about this time. This is a really disgusting image. Uh, Ward's longest running Vermont punk band, the uh, one of the main members, and now I can't remember his role in the band, passed away not too long after this. This is one of the last shows they played in Plattsburgh, if not the final one. Although I think they did one more at the Rota Gallery. I remember uh, one of the guys just walking out with an open container, walking down the street, and I was like, hey man, that's like not really cool to do here. Like you're 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 probably gonna get picked up, like there's cops all around. He waved me off and disappeared into the night. I had to send them a check later because they didn't stick around long enough to get paid. Book of the Month Club, hosted by Nick and Julian Jaster. I don't think this lasts too long, but it was a great effort. There's another really, really free market poster. Not a drop-off poster, but a poster for the event itself. That was a really great event. Rented out Trinity Park. Funny thing about this event is, uh, so it was a huge event, Trinity Park. I, I, I did it twice in a row. Thing was, the city never asked me for insurance. And so when I went to do it, I think for the third time, they are like, and, and your insurance? I was like, I never needed insurance in the past. And they are like, shit, that was an oversight. Insurance isn't cheap. So I don't do stuff like that anymore because I there's no way to turn a profit outside of sponsorships on this kind of thing. And I just don't feel like doing that kind of footwork right now. This is a really great hand-drawn poster. That's really good cartooning. That's a lot of fun. That's awesome. This one also is pretty cool. This looks like a Shannon Stott. Shannon Stott Rigsby poster. I'm going to say it is. Nona. My god. Uh, free puppy giveaway. This is a strict start time. Punk rock time is for nerds. Show up late and miss the free puppy giveaway. So uh, a, a common problem at punk shows is people not showing up on time. People don't want to start the show because no one's there. And then the show runs late because nobody wanted to start on time because nobody wanted to show up on time. Trying to curtail that, Corey Collins put a free puppy giveaway. Joke on the flyer. See the dog up there. People came early for the free puppy giveaway. Uh, stood around for a while. Asked when the puppy giveaway was going to happen. And they promptly were given a refund. And that was uh, the last time any jokes like that were made on a flyer for us. Dr. Gasp does these like kind of goofy, almost like children's music, uh, Halloween songs. He's been touring on it for a long time. He always does these amazing hand-drawn flyers. And I really love the look of these posters he does. You can find these are online as well. The Do Dr. Gasp posters are, are really great. Poetry and Song with Jeff Cochran. I made a real shitty flyer here. That's, again, a, you know, what, I got like 10 minutes for the show. Here's another uh, Neil Young Crazy Hoss open mic flyer featuring Mike Peterson, uh, some random hoes, and uh, Ralphie. And lots of pizza and wings. <laughs> open, open 
stage poetry night featuring Jason Torrance. That looks like a Tavish poster, maybe. Possibly a, a Tom Gadway. There's a Rota Gallery. Uh, there's some old calendars of events. The final Long Cat show. I, I said, uh... No cameras allowed as a way to scare people and, and uh, you know, make them be worried about what was going to happen. People were like, oh, shit, I would have brought my camera, but it said no cameras allowed. Again, don't put jokes on flyers. Uh, that's a weird one. I don't know why I was thinking when I made that. Little mini free market. This is a mini free market we did. I tried a little harder on that one. Uh, more collage stuff, more Rota Gallery, whatnot. Hey, Sugar. Awesome band. That was a really fun rock show. This is one of the funniest flyers I've ever seen. Uh, free show tonight, years in the making, and friends at Basha. Tonight, tonight, smiley face. Starts at 12 a.m. Show started at midnight? This was so goofy. I loved finding this flyer crumpled up on the ground. Awful flyer. Horrible fucking flyer, but also incredible flyer. It, it got me to want to know what the fuck was going on. Uh, taxpayers, Marco Polio and Forever Endeavor. Forever Endeavor didn't last long enough. That was a cool band for a short time. Kind of fast core, fast punk, hardcore kind of stuff to my memory. Almost like some fat wreck kind of stuff. I, I came up from uh, Syracuse to play this show, I believe. This was one of my first uh, Plattsburgh area shows. That was a fun show. Taxpayers were fun. They're were, they were a big folk punk band. Big band, I mean. Lots of members. Gilligan's Hideaway with the Angry Neighbors. I thought this was a hilarious flyer. I, I just get such a fucking kick out of this flyer. More folk punk at the Rota Gallery. More folk at the Rota Gallery. Collage Night was an event that we tried to do. Uh, low cost. Maybe we'd get some donations. Bring tapes, records, or CDs to listen to. Because we had a you know a whole stereo set up there. It brought like four or five people. Uh, this was a very inflammatory... Uh, offensive poster uh i'm gonna just move on past this but uh house of scandal this was uh people shit talking the local uh drag troupe and, and making some very disgusting claims about them rotacon this was a funny <laughs> rotacon was like a a mini you know comic con kind of event trade sh you know it was, a, it was a trade and swap event uh cut and paste uh collage show this was cool Debuted the uh, Lemon Gold and Sneaky Snakes Volume 1 LP. Uh, yeah, Rotacon. That's funny to me. There's a Sam Egan flyer. Are you sad, panicked, awkward, and don't fit in? Nevermore shall you experience these maladies. Sam and Matt have excellent renditions of timeless hit melodies. This is us doing a, a, mel a medley of different pop songs. Lost Mario hat. White with a ton of pins on it. If found, please call. There's the number. Uh, this is a loved and very missed. This hat is loved and very missed. Another hilarious flyer. I love the drawing of the hat for reference. And it's so sad this person lost their fucking Mario hat. I hope they got it back. Housewarming Party. Songs of Saberin. At the UU. There's Kevin Saberin and, uh, Meadow. More Syracuse area hardcore. Another, this looks like another Cer Ceremony original. Christina, or this could have been a Christina Nori original. Christina Nori, he healing through music at the Coffee Cat. Acoustic, ambient, meditative, entrancing. I'd say all that's true. What are friends for? Marco Polio, blah, blah, blah. Oh, this is a, a show I did, and, and people got mad that I said no drugs, no jerks, and, and had them smoking a joint on the flyer. I just thought it was funny. This was uh, at my mom's house in Syracuse. We did an acoustic backyard show. So, uh, Chichaco Taco did a handful of shows. That was a lot of fun. I wish that could happen again at a local restaurant. More hardcore shows at local restaurants. Uh, a couple other, you know, this is another Syracuse show. Accordion to Angie. <laughs> it's early iteration of Sparkle Bomb, if anyone is familiar with her work. More Syracuse Hardcore. What is this? This is another punk night at the at the uh, Monopole. Some of these shows got too wild with the moshing and stuff. We got in trouble for that. Uh, actually, Sparkle Bomb. She made this flyer here. This is a really sick flyer she made. 
at the halfway house. This is a house show we did out in uh, Potsdam. That was fun. Metal Mania at Therapy. All the Rage. Cutthroat Logic. Weather Remains. This was a local metal show back when Therapy would do metal. Huh? Well, you're probably not going to see that anymore. Uh, some Planet X record stuff. There's uh, one of the one of the last local shows I think I did. Oh, this is the last show at Castle Rockmore. This is the final show at, at my old house venue in Syracuse right there. Uh, more hardcore. Out from the sun, Ian Matthew. Eh, fuck that guy. Lo-Fi Felons, Lie Captive. That's one of the other shows that happened at the Olive Ridley's basement before it uh, shut down. More Syracuse Hardcore. There's an event calendar for Hudson Valley events. The Rota Gallery calendars are taking direct inspiration from this design. Benefit show for the Rota Gallery. <sighs> Let's see. Carnival at Basha. Carnival. That was a, that was a big ass lineup. Man, that's quite a lineup. The Plattsburgh Hoop Mamas. Uh, another rummage sale poster here. Wow. Second Friday at Trinity Cafe. No co local. Uh, this was an amazing find in the wild. I took this down off a of bulletin board. Porch sale, 9 Miller Street. When? Who fucking knows? What an incredible flyer. Uh, I think we've seen these ones already. Rich Schnell doing some train haikus. Uh, GDP did return to Plattsburgh uh, for a second show, although he didn't actually show up, and uh, the show uh, didn't go anywhere. Pyramid, Pyramid Pendulum was great, though. Uh, here's some more New York area hardcore and punk kind of stuff. Long Cat, Hell in November, Fiend, Mouth Breather at the Rota Gallery. Hoax and Squirm with Long Cat at Valentine's. That's a J. Crack original right there. Dance Dub Revolution at the Mono at the Mono at the Basha. That's another Alex Davis. Here's an old Rota Gallery brochure. That's kind of fun to look at. Maybe I'll scan that for people later. A benefit for uh, cancer benefit for Eileen Smith at Gelgans. I love stuff like this where it's like so pure and so handmade. Oh, man. Taylor J, rest in peace. I think Althea Holmes made this. That's a great flyer for a Rota bake sale. More Rota stuff. There's Crow Party. Crow Party had a, had a, had a residency at Monopol for a short time. That was something Monopole was trying to do for a while. It was a residency, like a weeknight residency with bands. I think that the... Uh, I think James Ward had a uh, reggae band with a residency there as well for a time. I don't think it's a wise choice. Uh, tire Fire. Grunge from Seattle. Marco Polio, Pop Pump from Cali. Yeah, that, that, that's a joke. Uh, but that, that show did happen. And uh, to my memory, they argued the whole time about their tone and the, the volume of their amps. It was a complete shit show. Uh, they barely got anything done, and then they left, and a very uh, mentally unstable man who had been seen around town covered in blood, uh, carrying a knife, uh, cornered me inside of the Rota and showed me his notebook. He reached into his jacket pocket, said, want to see something? And he pulled out a notebook where he had uh, write-ups for, you know, little mock-ups for, for sort of like plot outlines for sequels to things like Puppet Master and Child's Play. Uh, his own his own reinterpretations of reboots for these uh, well-established horror franchises, and then the whole time I was trying to walk toward the door, and he'd be like, "Yo, but wait, 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 man, you can't you can't fucking tell anybody I'm showing you this stuff. This is my treasure, you know." And like the whole time I was just like freaking out, and everybody left, and nobody was there to help me close up, and it was a, a horrible, horrible fucking night, and I really thought that I was gonna get stabbed that night. So I, I like that Sam and I both did these flyers where we're like, hey, are you feeling like a total loser? Well, come out to the show. It'll make you feel better. And the last thing here, uh, 
War Axe Ceremony or Punkahontas. <laughs> we don't know. We'll, which act will it be? We'll find out. It's a TBA. You got two choices. And I, I also play this show. And so did Alex Cribb. Not a lot of Alex Cribb solo appearances out there that I'm aware of. Uh, again, Alex Cribb. I think that is an uh, early alias of Alice and Jaster. So, hey, that's a, a, a look at one of my many binders of local and regional flyers. Uh, maybe people get a kick out of looking at these. Maybe not. But hey, I had to look at them anyway, so, uh, thanks. See ya.